Good morning or afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Joe Johnson, and I'm the marketing coordinator for the electric and gas utility team here in Redlands, California. Our webinar today is a joint webinar with Schneider Electric and Esri titled Creating Smarter Utilities. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. I'll then turn it over to our main speakers. On this slide, you'll see the different options you have during the webinar. You can change how you connect to the audio or adjust your view. Also, keep in mind you can ask questions during the webinar using the question dialog box and hitting the send button. There will be time for questions and answers towards the end of the webinar. At this time, I'd like to introduce our two speakers, Danny Petreca and Bill Meehan. Danny is the director of Schneider Electric's Global Channels for Geospatial and is deeply involved in the distribution, sales, and delivery of the ARC-FM solution into the utilities and telecom markets outside of the U.S. As manager of the executive strategic relationship with Esri, Danny ensures joint go-to-market alignment between Schneider, Esri, and their joint partners. Bill Meehan is the director of utility solutions for Esri. He is responsible for business development and marketing Esri geospatial technology to global electric and gas utilities. In addition to writing about GIS, Bill likes to write music and fiction. With that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Bill Meehan. Thanks, Joe. So we're talking about smarter utilities, and when, we, when I think about a smart utility, or, or even a smart infrastructure, I think about this notion of digital transformation. We've all heard this, this concept of, of digital transformation uh, as part of the, uh, the kind of the new wave of utilities. But uh, what I want to talk about is kind of the difference between digital transition, which is not nearly as transformational in effect as digital transformation, in particularly around utilities, which is what I'm most familiar with. And when I think about utilities and many of the infrastructure industries that I've worked with over the years, I like to think of them as sort of a combination of using really high tech and some ancient rituals or ancient practices. You know, I, have, I worked for a power company for many years and we had a lot of high tech and a lot of the companies that we work with have a lot of high tech, but yet we still sort of retain the notion of some workflows and, and practices that are that are pretty old and maybe even some obsolete, that are obsolete. So this notion of digital transformation, it, to be differentiated between digital transition is you can transform something digitally and yet you can still maintain the old practices. It's sort of the notion of you know paving cow paths in terms of, of moving forward. Uh, and so this map sort of illustrates it in relationship to geospatial technology. This is a map that was produced in 1927, I believe, and it shows it's it's kind of an electrical operating map that we've been that they were using for many many years. In fact, utilities have been using maps for for a long time. So over the years, though, those those maps were con transformed in digitally into CAD and then to GIS, like this map shows here. But but what 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 we're really doing is we're really looking at the map as if it was. Uh, a paper map and that we're transforming not only the, the physical processes of the paper map itself to digital, but we're kind of retaining the workflows associated with it. And we find many utilities today and many other infrastructure uh, companies like transportation agencies and railroads and so forth still sort of retain that same notion of paper and, and kind of replicating the paper. In fact, we used to joke in, in uh, uh, the power company that we had the, you know, some of the symbols, like that little chair, we'd want to try to replicate that in a digital form just to make it seem like, it. yeah, it's really the same old paper map that we've been using for years. So when I think about digital transformation, I think about sort of three elements of digital transformation. And the first has to do with technology. So this, this diagram kind of shows this notion of when we go digital transition, which we really don't really, it doesn't really provide that much val as much value as we'd like, as incremental. You know, we're making incremental improvements to things, like, for example, going from a paper map or a hand-drawn paper map to a digital map, or maybe even a PDF. It's sort of incrementally improving. And, and, and when, I, when I think about some of the industries that have gone through that incremental improvement, I think about the music industry. For many, many years, we've been using you know, uh, albums and vinyl and then 45s, and, and we made a transition from that analog to digital. We went from 
I don't know, it was, I think it was the cassette tapes, to CDs. Well, CDs are digital for sure, so that was a digital movement. Is that digital transformation? Well, not really, because we, the same, we use the CDs in some of the same ways. We carry them around, we put them in our cars, and we, we keep them in boxes and in cabinets. And when we, but what we're seeing now is a dramatic in, a change in the way music is handled through a digital transformation, streaming. Uh, people don't really buy CDs anymore. It, it's, 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 and the way we even, even buy music and listen to music, we, we just call up a device and say, hey, play me this song. And it's the same way. Uh, so a, a, a digital transition, transition is kind of like going from, from a cassette tape to a CD, and a digital transformation is going from a CD to a streaming device, DVDs, movies, everything like that. It's, it's really about that. So it's really the first piece of it is the technology. What's the technology? It's streaming or it's, it's web services. And I think about the, the transformation that we're seeing in the GIS industry going from basically desktop making maps to web services to the platform. Uh, Esri's come out with this ArcGIS platform, which is really transformational. So basically, you can you know you create those maps and you can get them on any device, anytime, anywhere. It's basically transformation using the cloud, using mobile devices. It's transformational. The second piece of transformation is digital transformation. It's going from legacy to something breakthrough. So, for example, if it takes ten hours to do a process, and you go to five hours or eight hours, that's really transition. But if you go from ten hours to two seconds. That's breakthrough. It's, it's like changing the whole thing, the workflows associated with, with what we do. So in this picture here, I show a leg. This is a customer's pictures. This legacy picture is a map room. This is physically what happened. We created these maps. Even though we used computers, this map room, and they've tra transformed it completely. In fact, that room is now not even used for maps anymore. It's used for an exercise room. It's basically because they've transformed it. They've turned their mapping system to basically an online system available anytime, anywhere, uh, on any device. That's really a, a changing digital. That's really digital transformation. The um, the last piece is about business. It's kind of the business model of how we even think about our business. So here's an example of status quo, taxi cabs to something completely disruptive like Uber. And there are other examples, and certainly the music industries, Netflix and Amazon. It basically, pe people go to, instead of going to the grocery stores, they just get everything online. My wife buys almost everything, even groceries, even fresh groceries, uh, online. It's amazing. So that's really a complete change. So the three elements of digital transformation is is really about the technology, and then it's about the workflow, and it's about the business model itself. Now, Danny's going to talk even in more detail about digital transformation, and, and, and he has this thing called the 3Ds. He's going to talk about that later. But that's really this idea. It's, we, we've got to kind of break out of the old habits, the old way we think about things, if we're really going to have transformation. So that's kind of the that's kind of the idea there. So when I when I think about the electric utility business, particularly because that's the one I'm most famous, most familiar with, we have these famous people called uh, Thomas Edison and Alexander Graham Bell. And and you probably heard this story before that if Edison were alive today, he would walk around uh, uh, the area and he would look at the electric system and he'd say, Yeah, that's pretty familiar. I recognize that. Maybe I helped even build that. Whereas uh, Alexander Graham Bell, when he looks at the sort of the telephone industry, he would look around, he wouldn't even recognize it because it, it's already gone through sort of this transformation of, of mobile phones and, and streaming and wireless and all that sort of stuff. But I believe, and I think many of us people will, be, many of us will believe that the electric business will experience more changes in the next five years than they have in the last 100. So if Edison were to show up in maybe five years, he too might not recognize the electric utility business or the electric distribution business. So it's, it, things are really changing dramatically over the, the next couple of years. And it's kind of an illustration of that. This is a picture of a subdivision maybe today. And what you'll see over the next, oh, I don't know, a couple of years, if you don't see it already, is solar panels on almost every roof. So that whole idea of electric distribution has changed dramatically. And, and and I like this. This was actually a, a presentation that Schneider Electric gave, and I sort of uh, I, I like it. I've used it. So that back in 2011, which wasn't that long ago, the, the the U.S. Energy Information Administration had this statement: the U.S. will have installed solar PV capacity of 8.9 gigawatts by 2035. That's a long time from now, right? Well, as of last year, we were already at 
over, I think it's even now up over 17 gigawatts. So they really misunderstood and they misappreciated the impact of, of solar energy in the United States. And it's going to get even more so. Well, that's what that's going to do. It's going to change the business model completely of the electric utility business. And in order to adapt to the, the new business model, we need digital transformation. Also, electric transportation is, is going to undergo, I think, in the next five years, a significant increase. We'll see, of course, more electric vehicles, Tesla and, and Nissan and Chevy and, and all of the manufacturers now coming out with electric and hybrid vehicles, uh, plug-in hybrids. I also think that probably the, the, the um, rail transportation will change a lot, as well as perhaps even freight rail, which will actually create additional demand for electricity. So it's not so much that demand will go down, but just the, the way in which that demand is being kind of characterized will change significantly. You know, climate change is, is going to change the way we think about our business as well. I mean, in terms of, of how crews operate, uh, uh, land is going to maybe shrink from, from uh, additional uh, erosion around, around uh, the water uh, waterways. We're going to see some, uh, some changes. We saw what happened during Superstorm Sandy where, where people were flooded that had never seen floods before. So climate change is going to change the business as well. So there's significant challenges there. And of course, the, this whole notion of sensors. Sensors are everywhere. The Internet of Things. Danny's going to talk a lot more about that and how that's impacting our business. So we've always had sensors in the electric utility business and in the gas business, but I think that those, the numbers of sensors are going to grow substantially with synchro phasers and, and fault indicators and, and wireless technology and the use of that. So we'll see Internet of Things dramatically change what we do. So uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing and what's different about it is the utility, uh, the ESRI's approach to the utility business is changing substantially. Yes, we've come out with the ArcGIS platform, which in of itself is transformational. But we're going to kind of complete that transformation with this new utility model with some of these features. The, the most significant features are the the new, you know, everybody knows kind of the, the way that we've been handling uh, uh, networks are through desktop and sort of a client server approach. We're doing something very different. Uh, we're transforming the way we think about the way data is managed and modeled using services based architecture as opposed to client server, cross platform support through whatever platforms come out, watches or you know, wearables or whatever that happens to be, some new uh, attribute rule frameworks and a whole enhanced editing experience. And what's really, really exciting is that our partners are uh, adapting this, this, this whole model, not just the, the way the, the network is being managed, but the whole platform. It's really, that's the transformation. That's the difference between digital transition, which is kind of improving or upgrading to something completely different that's going to change both the, te the technology is changing, the workflows will change, and the business model will change. And so from that, I'd like to introduce my good friend Danny Petreka, who's going to talk more about what our partner, a good partner, Schneider Electric, is doing to adapt to the changes, the dramatic changes in the utility industry and the changes in our technology. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Danny. Danny? Excellent. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Bill, can you hear me okay? Uh, I can certainly hear you. Perfect, perfect. Thanks for the great intro. Um, uh, great to, to be here, and thanks to Esri for helping us with this webinar. So um, at Schneider, we believe that access to energy is, is really a fundamental and basic human right and, and a foundation for progress. And you know, as the global specialist in energy management and automation, we have a front row seat in this energy transformation that Bill has explained. So let's now go deeper into the rapidly evolving world of digital energy. Let's see how it's changing, where it's changing, and more importantly, how this transformation is affecting you, how it relates to GIS, and what Schneider and Esri are doing about it. So the world of energy is, has obviously changed over the past 50 years. We've witnessed technological innovations, uh, evolutions in the market, and business model changes. Today in 2017, electricity markets are more competitive, more decentralized, thanks to convergence of the IT world and the operational technology out there. We, we're in the age of, of digital energy that Bill has talked about. But the change in our world is, is more profound than ever. New technologies are for the first time enabling distributing and connected energy, challenging us to redefine the way we live our lives and manage the grid. But if we take a closer look, we'll see that there are 3D megatrends having a profound impact on the electrical grid and the business of running them. First, decarbonization. 
For power systems, we're talking about the impact of renewables. It's predicted that over the next 15 years, growth in renewables will explode with grid-tied storage becoming a reality. Secondly, digitization. The Internet of Things has reached the power system. Billions of automated grid devices gathering and integrating energy data will change the face of the future grid and transform the job of grid operators. The third is decentralization. As power generation models are, are, are changing, microgrids, small-scale solar and storage can turn consumers into prosumers and produce energy closer to where it's used. These prosumers, again, are these individuals or campuses or businesses who are motivated by a more locally provided sustainable competitive energy system. So all this change brings challenges as well as new opportunity, possibilities, brand new business models and intelligence, and new levels of collaboration. So it seems that we're really primed for this digital transformation that, that Bill introduced. But is your current IT system landscape primed and ready as well? What about your processes and your businesses? Don't they need to rise to the challenge and evolve as well? Or do you just want another simple transition? Well, here at Schneider Electric, we actually build the stuff that makes smart utilities. From generation to feeder automation, substation automation, to the grid, to the grid edge, and beyond. And this diagram shows what Schneider's typical view of a smart utility of today must manage. Now, a lot of you may look at this and say, you know, that looks like a lot of what I use today. That's a pretty typical architecture that I use today. And you know what? This works just fine. It just works just fine as it is today. But the question is, can your GIS really handle this? Well, the most recent Gartner report on ADMS uh, in 2017 doubles down on the importance of GIS to smart utilities and IT OT convergence and demands huge advancements. They know how hard it is still today to keep the GIS and ADMS network models in sync. They point out the need to be able to support a higher fidelity asset and network model that can handle the modern grid. And they also talk about a comprehensive enterprise solution that has to serve as the brain or nerve center of the smart grid, addressing a wide range of modern distribution scenarios. That seems like a pretty tall order, pretty big challenge. Thankfully, we are energy optimists. This is not new to us. We've been talking about the importance of accurate and timely data for smart utilities for decades. All in all, this is where ArcFM lives. But until now, we've never had a high fidelity network in the GIS that permeated this ITOT stack while also enabling sharing of the network with the entire utility business. This is what is needed to help us establish GIS as the true unifier of the ITOT stack. So we, together with Ev Esri, our customers and our partners, we're trying to solve this problem. And you know, we think we can do it by using the technologies of today. Now, don't get me wrong, a great deal of innovation is still needed, but it requires us and you to transform the way we think about GIS and treat it in a very different manner. That is really the crux of what Esri and Schneider are doing. So let's get into more details of our plans. The first thing Schneider and Esri have done is to establish 10 to 1 as that strong quality platform that you should move to as you prepare to move towards newer technologies. Well, what does this mean to you? Well, first of all, it gives you that safe harbor. It's this place where you can move to, which will allow you to plan, prepare, and focus while we make ArcFM better today, while you prepare for tomorrow. This also eases the pressure, allowing you to move at your own pace and decide when to go without being forced to move or upgrade. Now, we continue our commitment with Esri to the utility and telecom release. We're continuing annual releases of the 1021 ArcFM platform. This provides improvements to the platform that continues to give you immense business value to today. Now, look for the fifth generation release of ArcFM solution 1021, 1021D, later this month uh, towards the end of May. So let's take a quick break here. It is time for a poll. So what I will do here, I'll open up our poll here, and we'll take a look at what we're looking at here. So in preparing for new technologies, including the new utility network, 
What are your top priorities? Is this about data cleanup? Do you want to participate in early adopter programs? Do you want to evaluate customizations, integrations, or adopt portal, or, or are you not really sure? What are you thinking about this? I'll give you a couple minutes to, to log in and to uh, go ahead and lodge your poll and uh, lodge your vote. We'll talk about the results here. A lot of big topics out there. Data cleanup, technology, integrations, portal. Maybe you're just not sure. OK, I think we've had enough time. We can go ahead and share the results of that poll. OK, so we've got, we've got a lot of information. We've got about 47% and 44% talking about customizations and integrations and a little bit about data cleanup. Those are two very big topics. But if you look across the board, I mean, early adopter programs are pretty important. Portal and WebJS is pretty important. And a fifth of you are not sure. Well, uh, let's, let's move on, because that's really some great food for thought that's going to allow us to, to get to the next level here. OK, so let's move on. Let me just close this here. So what are we doing after 1021? Well, as we move on to future technologies, we're being driven by what our customers are telling us they need. They need help adopting WebGIS, utility network, and new desktop apps like ArcGIS Pro. You're telling us you need better support for mobility. Everything is so mobile now to have their applications work the same connected or offline. They also need simpler, more focused apps. Give us what we need to get our work done and nothing more. And we know firsthand through our decades of work in the design process that this design workflow is still burdened and complex. You're, you need partial posting, better as building, and need to finally get rid of uh, the legacy paper. And you've told us, don't just improve my app. Don't just improve my technology. Help me improve my internal processes. And frankly, isn't that one of the requirements for transformation to truly happen, like Bill laid it out? So what we are building and what we're using to drive our future is the next generation of ArcFM. We call it the ArcFM Solution 11 series. And ArcFM 11's goals line up with the needs of the user community. We're taking advantage of the latest and greatest in the Esri platform, Pro, Utility Network, Identity, Identity and WebGIS. We're also providing you that upgrade path from 10 to 1 C, D, and what happens next. We're keenly focusing on applications that improve the design and construction workflow with flexible technologies that improve mobility as well. And all of this strives to improve the data quality, integrity, timeliness, and high fidelity of that network model that's needed to power the smart utility. So let's take a closer look at how we're improving the design process. First, we're building focused apps for the design and construction workflow. Designer 11, ArcFM Mobile 11, ArcFM Editor 11, and ArcFM Web 11. These apps are focused on performing tasks and solving problems specific to a role. The apps, capabilities, functions, and tools are all geared to handle what a specific role needs to do their job. Again, all centered around the design and construction life cycle. Let's take a closer look. Designer 11, a runtime app built especially for the engineers. It presents only the tools that are needed to create a sketch, a build materials, a construction print, and engineers don't have to know GIS to do their job. ArcFM Mobile 11, another runtime app so it's simple and lightweight and built specifically for the crews and linemen doing construction or map corrections. It offers redlining, tracing, construction, tracking, as well as, as built editing. ArcFM Editor XI, built on ArcGIS Pro and the utility network, specifically for your GIS editors. And its tools are focused on commissioning uh, and as built editing the design on the desktop. And finally, ArcFM Web 11 for sharing and collaborating with your other stakeholders via web apps and portal. How 
How else are we improving the design process? Well, all these apps are built to talk to one another. Not only can each app open a design, read a design, and write back to it, but it can pass the design on to the next person in the process. And we've built a next generation workflow engine to support the passage of these jobs through the ecosystem of our apps from person to person. How else are we improving mobility? Well, in the ArcFM Solution 11 series, our apps work whether they're online or offline. We've built sync services to provide scalable replication services to feed our apps the right data at the right time. We've also built in partial connectivity in our apps so that the user doesn't need to care whether they're online or not. For example, Design 11 will work offline at its first release later this year using these sync services. And ArcFM Mobile already works offline and has the built-in features uh, to work partially connected, including tracing. Both of these apps, all of our mobile applications, scale to thousands of offline users simultaneously. How are we supporting the migration to newer technologies and simpler focused apps? Well, by using the latest in the Esri platform, we can ensure participation in the entire Esri stack. Designer 11, like we talked about before, as well as ArcFM Mobile 11, they're utilizing the latest ArcGIS runtime technology. ArcGIS uh, ArcFM Editor 11, built on top of ArcGIS Pro. And of course, ArcFM Web 11, built using the latest HTML5 JavaScript uh, SDK as well. Now, we'll also be adopting the concept of identity in all of our apps to help tailor these applications to the specific definition of the role or the job at hand, really personalizing this. And they will support the ArcGIS portal for sharing and collaboration, a very powerful thing. Now, don't forget that we've been in this WebGIS uh, mode for quite some time here, and we've, we've been offering dozens of ArcFM maps and apps. These are free WebGIS-based applications designed to get more out of the investment you've made in your ArcFM data via portal. It's basically our version of the, uh, the Esri solution templates. So please go to uh, ArcFMMapsAndApps.com for more uh, information there. Now, all of our apps will support the utility network in some way, shape, or form. This is really that, that leap and transition we need provides us the ability to model that super high fidelity asset network model that's required to drive the smart utility that we talked about before with that Gartner survey. It also allows that network to be shared throughout the platform, something we can't do with the geometric network today, driving even more possibility for efficiencies. Now, a really important piece that our customers have brought up is the need to be able to move at their own pace. A lot of transition happening. They want control of when they want to move. So we're building this ecosystem of apps to support that. All the applications today will support the geometric network today. And they will support the utility network once it is out and once it is ready. The beauty of this is that you can start to adopt new ArcFM Solution 11 series technologies today without waiting for the utility network. And when these applications change to use the utility network, your users won't have to know the difference. To make that even easier, we're supporting the availability to uh, work in a mixed te technology environment. For example, Designer 11 can send a job for as building to ArcFM 1021 today. Or ArcFM Mobile 11 can send mobile red lines to ArcFM 1021 today as well. These are bridge technologies that allow you to stay at 1021 while moving at your own pace to the 11 series. Now, if we go back to this diagram and we remember the Gartner report, they stressed another very important bridge in technologies. And that bridge is that main integration point between the GIS and the ADMS. So part of our future plans include improving the GIS ADMS integration and the workflow, utilizing the latest SIM standards. Now again, this is not just about a new integration technology. It's not just about data ETL. It's about the entire integrated workflow, about 
integrated system planning, and improving the model management. And again, it is driven by the design and construction workflow. Well, what does ADMS have to do with the design and construction workflow? Well, this is where assets are born. So our goal is to drive the required asset intelligence down closer to the birth of that asset. On top of that, we'll leverage the synergies of sharing a common compatible unit or CU library with an equipment library in the ADMS, uh, as well as the capabilities of the utility network. Eventually, we hope this will enable a much more streamlined network model sharing uh, within the design process as well as the typical asset management and network management process. So this is what we're building. Focused apps for the design and construction workflow. Designer 11, built for the engineers. ArcFM Mobile 11, built for your field crews. ArcFM Editor 11, built for your GIS editors on top of ArcGIS Pro, and ArcFM Web 11, built for the rest of your organization. This is not just about new technology. It's about an ecosystem of apps, of apps supporting the entire design and construction workflow. And its goal is to help you transform to a smart utility. And Schneider and Esri, we know just a little bit about GIS transformation. We, we've had a front row seat as we've watched the role of utility GIS evolve from its history till today. We pioneered this industry with Esri 30 years ago. With over 750 years of delivery expertise and 500 customers worldwide, we are your trusted advisor. In 1999, we transformed the utility GIS from the past, and we can do it again with your help and with Esri's help. But we need a change in how utilities work to meet the challenge. We need to resist the muscle memory of the past, uh, the old ancient rituals, as Bill Meehan likes to put it, and drive that convergence of IT and OT, and not just change our technology, but change our workflows, our businesses and our processes, and realize a true digital transformation. So let's take a quick break and look at another poll here. We'll open up this poll. And we'll go ahead and take a look at what the audience is looking at here. So, as you look at new updated applications, which areas are the highest priority for your applications? Is it mobile? I know that's a big one for us. Um, how about web? That's a pretty broad idea. Uh, graphic work design, something I, I've, I've grown up with desktop GIS or something else? Are we missing something? Uh, are we missing something here? Is there something else that's really important to you? So I see about half of you have voted. Votes are, are being tallied. We're up to about 65%. We'll give you about another 15, 20 seconds to, to go ahead and, uh, and address the poll here. We're up to 70%. I kind of see the trend evolving here. So. Um, Give you another 10 seconds. Let's see if we can get the 75% of the votes in. About 71. I think that's all we're going to get. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, results here. So our results. Oh, I can't see. The, there are the results. Great. So pretty overwhelming. Three quarter of you, or quarters of you, are talking about mobile. Well, it's a good thing that... Esri is enable mobile, enabling mobile in all their runtime SDKs, and we're adopting that across all the uh, ArcFM Solution 11 series uh, as a, a main tenant. Web. Web is a very important thing as well. We've got 60% of you guys. Graphic work design, 30. Desktop, about 40%, and others. So it looks like we're not missing a whole lot here, but we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that we continue to focus on that uh, mobile workflow with web and graphic work design ingrained as well. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the slides here. Okay, button this up here. Great. So, you probably got some questions. A lot of this is great and interesting. Obviously, things are aligning, stars are aligning, but what should I implement today and in 2018? First, if we haven't told you over the past two years, three years, us and Esri keep beating this drum. Please 
upgrade to 1021 of Arc FM and ArcGIS Desktop 1021 with the latest UTUP patches. Again, your your web and server technologies can move forward to the latest, greatest from Esri. You should also start getting accustomed to WebGIS solutions or WebGIS themes and patterns, as Esri calls it. So work with ArcGIS Enterprise. And if you don't know, ArcGIS Enterprise is the rebranded, renamed version of ArcGIS Server. Work with ArcGIS Online, Collector, and Explorer, and get used to some of the basic ideas of what's a web map and, and what's, uh, what's identity about. Work with uh, the SDKs and APIs in ArcGIS Enterprise to integrate your business systems through the web services, really a modernization of your enterprise systems. And then plan to implement extensions to that ArcGIS Enterprise uh, platform with real-time, geoanalytics server and insights. A lot of exciting stuff there that can help you get more uh, insight into your applications. And you can do this now. Check out the Schneider Bridge products. So Designer 11. ArcFM Web, ArcFM Mobile. These, th these things work today with what you already have and can improve the way you run these workflows. Again, gets you used to these WebGIS themes and solutions. Well, what can I do today to prepare for the utility network? Well, all you have to do is, is, is just go to Esri site and you got everything you need there about what the utility network is about. There's a lot of thought uh, leadership being, being presented out there. But I think one of the most, most important things you can do is get started testing 10.5 in the utility network beta after it ships. Now, I'm told from my uh, inside sources at Esri that that should happen this week, uh, if not within a few days. But the important thing is, uh, as a current customer partner paying maintenance, go get that utility network beta Im uh, implemented in a test environment, test it out, and provide feedback to us in Esri. We want to know how this thing is working for you. And there's a lot of opportunities for you guys to provide that. Now, I also want you to come see the Arc FM 11 prototype that we'll be demoing at the Esri User Conference in 2017. Again, Arc FM 11. Uh, of our 500 or so customers out there, every one of them uses ArcFM. So you're going to want to know what ArcFM 11 looks like. Um, and as ArcFM 11 uh, matures, we are going to be running an early adopter program. So talk to us about how you can become more involved. And in general, you know, uh, from looking at these polls and looking at the results that you're interested in, your your, your customizations, your integrations, and how you move from one uh, platform to the next and how you can realize this transformation, ask us for help. We're the experts. We've done this for countless utilities from seven to eight technology, eight to nine, nine to 10, and now we'll take you from 10 to the 11 series as well. So ask us for help. We're here for you. Well, what about some of the upcoming events where you guys can learn more about what Schneider and Esri are doing for smart utilities? Well. There's the big one, the Esri User Conference, July 10th to 14th in San Diego. Uh, lots of exposure there about the utility network, and you'll see a lot of demonstrations of the ArcFM 11 uh, prototype. And then the rebranded uh, EGOG Conference, Esri GeoConnects 2017. Again, date has changed, so it's in, in September this year. Make sure you, you get your tickets to Chicago. Um, and then uh, Schneider Electric, we have our own user group uh, link which will be in uh, February 27th to March 1st, 2018. A great way for you guys all to engage with us. Um, aside from that, if, if you want to work through social media and, and want more continuous ways to keep in touch with what we're doing, there's almost too many ways to keep in touch with us. Um, on Twitter, there's the at SchneiderGIS handle where you can hear about everything that's happening. Shameless plug for my own uh, Twitter handle here. And then the various uh, Esri Twitter handles, whether it's Esri EGOG or Esri Telog or ArcGIS Pro, lots of stuff there. Now, if you haven't already, please uh, sign up to be a member of the Schneider Electric Geospatial Group in LinkedIn. The link is here, uh, or you can just search for the group in LinkedIn. Um, I promise if you, if you mention this webinar, we'll, we'll let you in as, as a friend of Schneider Electric. Uh, but it's a way to, to hear the latest of what we're specifically doing. Now, if you're a current customer or partner, you know about the ArcFM 11 uh, space in Exchange. If you don't, please go ahead and check out that space. It's where we provide all of our information uh, to keep you abreast of what's going on for this whole series of products, whether it's ArcFM 11, 
Designer 11, Web 11, or Mobile 11. And if you don't already know about Esri's Utility Network landing page, uh, go to esri.com slash utility network, a great way to keep uh, abreast of what uh, we are, are hearing from our friends in Redlands. Uh, and again, there's also that, um, that uh, there's a uh, white paper that goes out with that as well as a uh, newsletter. So with that, what I will do is um, we'll take a look to see if you guys have questions for Bill or I. We'll open up uh, the questions and um, take a look at what we're working with here. So let me go ahead and take a look at my questions here. Thanks, Danny. Yep. You know, one of the things that I, and while we're waiting for Danny to read the questions, one of the things that uh, is really interesting is that 3D uh, thing. And I, it's really the first time I heard it over a couple of days ago, and I think we've all talked about it. But, you know, the, the industry, and this is particular to the electric industry, is going through a significant transformation. And we really need the, the technology. And I, and I want to emphasize that this new um, utility solution, Danny referred to utility network, and we, we may call that something else over the next couple of years, but but that really is, it. it's it's really about transformation uh, more than we've probably seen. It completes the whole uh, platform technology, as I said earlier. So Danny, w w one of the questions that uh, that came up was about ITOT, and, and that was, yep. uh, what does that actually mean? Of course, that's IT, meaning the regular IT and, and operational technology. And I think we've seen it, and you've probably seen it as well. We can discuss this, is this idea of convergence of the two. It's not just in GIS, yep. but just in general. Um, you know, when I was working for the power company years ago, uh, we had a uh, we had a SCADA system, and we uh, and of course they still do, but but that SCADA system was kind of independent of anything. It was sort of its island unto itself. In fact, it, it, I don't even think it was connected to the internet at all. It may not have been the internet back in those days, but but the idea is that there was a lot of information that uh, that was in kept within SCADA, which might have been really helpful for the rest of the organization, but it was very difficult to get that kind of information out to the rest of the organization. And of course, what they're talking about, OT is operational technology. So that's what SCADA, DMS, uh, maybe even AMI would be about how these sort of control systems, very specialized systems. But we're seeing there's the there's kind of an integration or even a convergence of the two, or maybe even a you know sort of a muddying of the of the differentiation between IT, which would be more your commercial and your work management, and OT, which is the operational stuff. And this picture that Danny showed up kind of illustrates that. Danny, you might want to pick up on that uh, concept. Yeah, no, that, that's a great, it's a great question because sometimes we just throw around these acronyms and, and hope you understand it, but you're right, and if you missed it, on the left here, you see the traditional IT landscape, which is GIS and all the enterprise pieces you're used to. The OT is the SCADA, ADMS, but also out into the field, all the devices in the field, and you see this overlap of IT and OT, and you see GIS kind of bridging that gap and SCADA bridging that gap, and that's what we really talk about. It's about the enterprise systems that we all know and love getting more integration and more transformation with the actual devices in the field that operate the network. So that, that's a great question there. Mm. Um, I got another question here. I know this is on everybody's mind. Um, when will the utility network be available? Um, Bill, you want to take that? Because I spoke to Larry this morning. I can answer it. Well, um, you know, we're scheduled to be uh, available for for release uh, by the very end of the year and perhaps early in the uh, in 2018. So maybe what you can give me a little bit update of, and what what Danny's who Danny's referring to is our really our uh, product manager for the utility, not just the utility network, but really all aspects of the utility. His name is Larry Young, and for those that have been involved in the community, you know Larry well. So has Larry given you anything different from that? No, that, that that's correct. For the release, uh, the only update is for the beta, which I know people want to get their hands on. The beta should be this week or within a week. Uh, yeah. So that, that's a good update there as well. Yeah. So um, just a, a comment about the about the timing of this. Now, as as uh, Danny spoke about, and we've talked about years uh, for for a couple of years, is that we want people to upgrade to ten to one. That's our uh, 
that's our standard release. It's been vetted. It's been, you know, it, it, it's really a solid release. And f for the most part, <coughs> the um, the, trans the digital transformation around that really revolves around the, the platform itself. And uh, ArcGIS 1021 will participate very, very strongly in the platform. But the completion really of that whole process is the what we're referring to as the utility network. And we're not rushing it. I mean, we're, we're not saying, oh, they, this is like a like an upgrade, like we do, you know, we upgrade our software on a regular basis. Now we're on 10.5 for uh, RTS Enterprise Server and so forth. But 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 this is really something different. So we want to make sure that it's right. We, it's so different, and it's so um, it, it, it's it's going to bring us into the for the next. It's and it's going to be for the next 15 years. We're going to have this this technology. We're yeah, get it absolutely definitely. right. So we we do not want to rush it. And sort of in the middle of the development process. Um, we, we've we've seen the the importance of web services, and so we we kind of um, we wanted to make sure that it was really the first major um, I would call it call it domain specific uh, technology that had uh, web services at the heart of its system. So it's so even editing is done through uh, web services and through uh, services oriented systems. So it's it's pretty dramatic and it's, and it's really going to be good, but it's not something that we want people to rush into either. And the perfect lead into the next question is, okay, that's when the UN will be available. When is Arc FM 11 coming out? Well, the first release of Arc FM Editor 11 is dependent on the, the successful release of the utility network. So the plan is to make our initial release of Arc FM Editor 11 available shortly after the utility network is officially released. Again, we, we want to get it right as well. So that initial release of Arc FM Editor 11 will be focused primarily on the critical functionality for but really the GIS editor is centered again around the design and construction workflows. And uh, you'll see prototypes of this at the user conference. Uh, come see us there. But we're also planning on providing an early adopter program for ArcFM Editor 11 because we know all of you use it. Uh, well, the <laughs> current ArcFM customers use it as development prog progresses. Yeah. Um, one thing just about the utility. So, as well, Danny, just one thing. Ahead. So at user conference at we'll we'll have what's called the um, expo. It's it's the industry island, and Schneider Electric will have a good sized booth there too. So we'll have folks from the development team uh, in really two places. One in the utility island area, which is going to be sort of in the center of the floor at the for those that are coming to the user conference, as well as in the development area. So we're going to be covering the technology pretty extensively at the uh, uh, at the user conference, as well as featuring some of that on our uh, main stage as well. So, Bill, one of this is a this is a question for Esri. Uh, with all of the advances in ArcGIS Pro and the utility network, is there still a need for ArcFM in the future? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we're um, we're really thrilled to have Schneider Electric as a, as a partner, uh, and of course, it's going to be things are going to be different. But um, as Danny, you said, you're working on. Uh, ArcFM 11 is, is ready. So we'll continue to rely on Schneider and partners to complete the solution. I mean, that's, that's we, we're, we, we so strongly believe in the partner network. That's what, what helps us grow. We're continuing to work uh, with closely with Schneider Electric to redefine network management in general to leverage the industry uh, evolution to the smart, smart utilities, digital transformation. Absolutely. Great. Great. So I've got two questions here that are related. Um, Will this story include Fiber Manager as well as Responder in the future? Absolutely. Um, our telecom customers as well as our gas and water customers and our Responder OMS customers are absolutely included in our future. Uh, you just must understand, though, that we, we follow Esri's lead with the uh, focus of our new technology being on electric workflows first. That's really where the utility network is being centered. So. As we, as we round out the uh, bridge to Arc FM 11 for electric, uh, our fiber manager folks, our responder folks will absolutely be, be included in the future. And in fact, we're in the early stages of, of trying to uh, work out how that, the, the domain data model for telecom for the utility network will, will be used. Again, we've got 120 telecom users of our fiber manager product. Uh, and there's a lot of ESB partners that can help with this as well. So telecom GIS, absolutely, in the future. Responder as a GIS-based OMS, absolutely, uh, will be available in the future. And I think I saw another one here about WavePoint. WavePoint, again, is the web-based uh, partner to Fiber Manager. Right now, it's an HTML5 application, 
But over time, it, it will uh, move over to the ArcFM web platform, kind of rounding out that whole idea of uh, that ecosystem of apps that all kind of look and feel the same. Um, another question about releases, you guys, I don't know why, you're so, so, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, interested in when we're releasing things. Well, uh, when will the first release of Designer 11 be available? Um, again, we had an alpha program last year. We finished up a beta program as well with over 40 participants. First release of Designer 11 is scheduled for uh, late Q3, early Q4 this year. So look for it in end of September or October-ish as well. Um, a reminder, Web and ArcFM Web and ArcFM Mobile are already uh, available today. Hey, Bill, if you see other questions out there you want to throw sure. out, I'm, I'm paging through them now. There's quite a few, and yeah, they're great I, questions. Yeah, uh, let me just uh, pick it up. There's, some, there's a question about, uh, well, we had a question also about, let me just page through as well. Uh, what version of SIM will Esri and Schneider support? So as for many, maybe you don't know what SIM stands for, it stands for Common Information Model. It's a, a standard that was developed by the International Electrotechnical Commission uh, uh, it's a global standard, and it's really about interoperability between various electrical systems. It's really about a, a sort of network interaction, uh, and uh, and of course it's a, it's an international standard. So we'll I guess the simple answer is, and Danny, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We'll support the latest version of SIM. Yeah, that's it's about as cleanly as you can put it. The latest version, yeah. yeah. And remember, we we have the ADMS side of this as well with the Schneider ADMS system, and it's got um, the capabilities to ingest different uh, versions of of SIM compliant uh, model as well. But again, remember, we're not just talking about updating to the latest standard or improving an ETL process. We want to make that integration between IT and OT more seamless and you know, if you didn't get the crux of this of this webinar, the utility network is that that uh, evolution forward to a, a network model in the Esri platform that can uh, do things like the assemblies and the and the taps and the windings and that high fidelity information that's required to run the ADMS. We know this because we have the world's leading ADMS. The tricky thing is we need to do it at such in such a way that the GIS people aren't burdened into becoming power engineers, but we have to do it enough so that the ADMS gets what it needs in a timely fashion to run that, that OT side of the house. Right. And, and in, in our developers, when we were building the utility network, we were looking very closely at the, uh, at the standard SIM just to make sure that, uh, that it, it represents, uh, as Danny said, we want to do it simply, but it does represent the kind of the framework that SIM has, uh, has talked about. There's another question here about, uh, let's see here, collector. It's, uh, uh, let me just pick that up here. Uh, I am, I think the question states something like, uh, uh, I am new to ArcFM Mobile for, no, wait a minute, I am new to ArcFM and wondering what the connection is between ArcFM Mobile and Collector for ArcGIS. What is the pros and cons of using ArcFM over ArcGIS applications? So uh, Collector really is a, uh, it's it's a it's a free application that comes with the uh, ArcGIS uh, utility, or you know, it comes free with just ArcGIS. It's it's an application, and it is it has some really good uh, functionality for simple viewing and managing data in the field, and it uh, it links very closely with an application called Dashboard. Of course, uh, we also have something called Runtime, which was which is makes things much more um, specific to workflows. And I guess, Danny, you could say that, that the ArcGIS Mobile is more specific to a particular uh, utility-related workflow where Collector is a little yeah, more general. Yeah, absolutely, Bill. It's, it's a great way to put it. They're complementary products. They're absolutely complementary. Collector is that app that, that you get with your identity, and it's exactly what Bill said. It's very focused. Um, ArcFM Mobile is, is really streamlined to utility workflows. But again, it works off of the same foundational ArcGIS platform technologies that Collector does. It works with identity, it works with web maps, and it has the ability to, to get that information sent back and forth. Now, one difference, though, is the ability to scale. Uh, Collector obviously has very good offline capabilities. ArcFM Mobile, we've extended Esri's uh, sync services, that offline technology, to scale uh, more readily to thousands uh, of users, which is what really those those large tier one utilities uh, re require. So that's 
they're, they're great technologies. They're complementary. Please check them both out if you're interested. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to pick. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. So there may be some workflows where collected by itself might be very simple workflows where that might just be fine for what you want, whereas for other things you may want something much more uh, uh, suited to your particular workflow. So you don't have to pick. You can, have, you can use both, and, yep. and, and that's really it. As, as Danny says, it's, it's built on the same technology. Uh, here's another one that helps clarify the 1021 policy. So what version of ArcGIS Server is recommended for customers staying on ArcGIS 1021 desktop? This is a very good question. No, Glad good it was question. asked because it gives yeah. me another chance to clarify this. The, the 1021 policy is only about desktop. desktop. Your ArcGIS Server technologies can and should, if you have a need, move to the latest and greatest. In fact, to use the utility network, Bill, don't you need 10.5 running? 10.5 server? That's correct. That's correct. And, and we're going to be releasing the next um, iteration of 10.5, 10.5.1 in, uh, in short order, probably in another couple of months. So that will, and it'll just enhance the capabilities of 10.5. 10.5 actually was a significant uh, release for us. Uh, it's a, a, a really a major, major release. Perhaps we could have called it 11. I mean, you know, it's possible. But anyway, we called it 10.5. But this, 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 so please check out our website uh, for the capabilities of 10.5. Uh, we're bundling a lot of the uh, uh, the server capability. And in fact, it, it, we call it 10.5 Enterprise. That's how we refer to it. Good, good. Um, another question here. Will ArcFM objects, those things you all know about, be going away? Yes. Uh, all of the ArcFM Solution 11 series will use regular ESRI objects. The ArcFM uh, objects uh, do not have a place in the future, but we'll continue to support them, obviously, with the legacy um, applications that you all use. Um, does Schneider plan to create automatic migration tools from actual geodatabase, mo geodatabase model to the utility network model? Well, that's a, it's a great question, but I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding here in that Yes, uh, Esri will be creating um, scripts to help move your data to the utility network model and to define the utility network model itself. But again, remember, this move to the utility network isn't just about a new data model. This is a migration of the major parts of network management that are required by the Esri platform and by ArcFM. It's a network model, sure, but it's, it's data quality and assurance uh, functionality like the auto updater framework for attribute rules. It's about uh, the versioning model, the, the editing model in the future. All this changes. So when we talk about a migration to the utility network model, anybody could simply do a, a, a scripting to move from a source to a destination in a data model. But this is about the rest of the, that whole network model management workflow. And all that has to be there from Esri's platform and ArcFM for you guys to move. So. The scripts will be there, but we're going to provide you with more of a uh, of a guidance to get you to the future of where do things like store displays live in the future? Where do my QAQC rules move to the future? What's this scripting language called Arcade, and how can I how can I use that in the future? So, again, um, if you want to learn more, talk to us, talk to Esri about this, and talk to our partners. It's uh, there's a lot more to it than you think, and we're not trying to scare you. We're being honest and transparent. Work with us, and we're going to build our technology in such a way that it helps you move to it at your pace without without causing too much disruption. Danny, we're running out of time. I think we're within uh, a minute or two minutes be, uh, before we have to end. Uh, there was a – do we have one more question that we could pick up? Uh, I'm patient through the bottom here. ones. Um, it says, please, what were the 3D patterns, decarbonization, these? Oh, okay. I can take this an easy one. So there were three Ds. I, I like the three Ds. Decarbonization, of course, means the, the movement away from fossil fuels, which solar, wind, uh, geothermal, decentralization. No, it was the second one was digital, digital transformation. More yeah, digital. I put it up there. Yeah, yeah. So that's decarbonization. Digitization and decentralization of the grid. Which decentralization is really about moving like to microgrids and so forth. So that's all. Yep. Thanks. Yep. We've got some other questions. What we will do is we will uh, answer those questions um, offline for those two directly to the people who ask the questions. And we will uh, we want to thank you all for coming and, and joining the, uh, the webinar. And we'll do this again. And again, if you have any questions, I've, we didn't give my Twitter handle. It's at 
Bill underscore Meehan, M-E-E-H-A-N, uh, and certainly go on. We have plenty of LinkedIn groups, and many of you are involved in LinkedIn groups. See you at Esri's User Conference, at Esri's uh, what we call GeoConnects, which is the old EGUG and now Telog together, and see you at the Link Conferences uh, in, when is that, in March, right, uh, Danny? Uh, February, February, end of February, March end of next February, year. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, next year in 2018, and also have a great day. Danny, do you have any final comments before we end? I just want to say thanks to all our customers, our partners, and especially to, to Esri for, for, for providing this, this great avenue to keep you guys abreast of what's going on. So thank you very much, guys, and have, uh, have a good morning, afternoon, or, or day, wherever you are. Take care.